microphone because my voice is pretty big. So my presentation is very short. I'm going to give you an introduction of who we are, where we started, what we do, how we do it. Um, and it's very short primarily because if anyone has ever seen me speak before, if anyone has ever seen me on YouTube, I think that questions, I think that you can get answers when you ask questions. There's no question that you can ask me that I'm going to be offended by. Okay, I represent <clears throat> probably about 5,000 kids um, throughout the city of New York. And when you speak to me, and you'll see, when you speak to me, it's like you're speaking to them. Okay, so keep in mind, you're going to learn some things about myself. You're going to learn some things about the program. Some of the things that you guys were talking about um, when Dr. Ken, when he did his, when he did his presentation, um, I like those questions. I want you to give me those same questions because I have some, I promise you, I promise you, if it's 150 of y'all in here, 75 of y'all are going to be offended before y'all leave. <laughs> I promise you. And then about 20 of y'all are going to be waiting outside to fight. <laughs> and I fight, so I'm going to be right out there, okay? I promise you that, okay? But what you are going to get from this presentation, what you are going to learn from this program, what you are going to, and then when I finish, um, I'm going to bring, I brought my director of programs up, Shema Sharaz, he's right here doing um, a video on the phone. And so what we're going to do in the Q&A part, um, we're going to play, um, you know, since they don't have a phenomenal male tennis duo. We're going to be the male version of Venus and Serena against all y'all. All right? So we're going to be up here. And any question that you have, I want you to think of the toughest questions that you can come up with. I want you to ask us. We're going to share some things with you that's going to shock and amaze you. And I promise you, if you and, 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 and if you've ever seen me before, like the kids say, I keep it tall. I keep it stacked. By the end of this presentation, if you are not empowered, to go out and make a difference in the lives of at least one of the children that you come into contact with, put your resume back online. <laughs> we are graphics. Who is graphics? The acronym for graphics is Gang Diversion, Reentry, and Absent Fathers Intervention Center. What is graphics? Graphics is a three tier intervention program that offers evidence based highly intense anti-violence and behavior modification life skill services to targeted men and women throughout the greater New York area. Targeted youth, we define targeted youth as, is identified as at-risk, disconnected, or severely behaviorally challenged youth and young adults between the ages of 11 and 17. Targeted adults is defined as at-risk, disconnected, or returning men and women from the ages of 18 and up. Our mission is to decrease criminal activity, pay attention people, to decrease criminal activity, recidivism, and absent fathering by providing real-time alternatives for people that are genuinely interested in change. What's the key word here? The key word is genuinely interested in change. For the last 25 years, I've come into contact with nonprofit organizations that get a plethora of money. Oh, newscast. Um, the, the, the incident that happened in Baltimore, it was just declared a homicide. So I don't know how many of you guys got that to your phone, it was just declared a homicide. And Mission Society, um, the individuals that are funding the SNUG program, just lost all of the funding. They just lost all the $13 million. So for any of you guys that are in the room that have any clients or anything that's going on in Harlem, Harlem is going to most definitely be hot this summer because there's no gun violence program in Harlem. So it's gonna get hot up there. Let me get back to my presentation. Now watch this. For people that are genuinely interested in change. So what that means is this. Put a room full of guys in the room, kids in the room, and if it is your life's mission, because as you see what I, what I discuss, and as you learn the program, Graphics is probably the most successful, unfunded program in the city of New York. We say people that are genuinely interested in change because if it was 100 kids in a room, and of that 100 kids, if 30 of them, if it was their life's calling to be a gangbanger, 
you, de Blasio, the police commissioner, and all of the NYPD folks, y'all can go over there and only figure that out. But if you do not want to be involved with that, what we do at Graphics, we put a blanket of protection around you, wraparound services, 24 hours, and we let the community know, especially those OGs, that if anything happened to this kid, the gates of hell are gonna open right where it happened at because they belong to us. But well, watch this. I have a question that I usually ask people. What, and I want you to ask yourself this question as you see me up here doing this presentation. And then moving forward for any time that you are in another presentation. What qualifies a person to give you their advice and then ask you to apply their advice to your professional life and your personal life. What qualifies that person? Because anybody can go to the University of Phoenix online and get a college degree. You got some folks that go to the church and they get a church $600 and they doctor somebody. What qualifies a person to give you their advice and ask you, and I don't want you to answer the question. I'm, we don't get to that, we don't get to that. What qualifies a person to give you their advice ask you to apply that advice to your personal life and your professional life. When it comes to this, here's what qualifies me and my staff. Dr. Kai Smith wasn't always Dr. Kai. I call this little small segment, I'm gonna get back to this from the streets to the suites. Here's the boring part, here's the part that the kids don't like. I have a total of six college degrees. I have two BAs, I have two masters, I have a national certification in human resources, and I'm defending my dissertation for my PhD in organizational psychology and operations management. I graduated from Metropolitan College in New York, I graduated from Rutgers, and I graduated from Cornell. I did all that after doing 16 years in prison. I did nine years in New York, five years in Virginia, two years in South Carolina. I came home from prison in 2002, and from 2002 to date, I've accomplished everything that I've accomplished. I have a 3,000 square foot space in Harlem. I have a 3,000 square foot space in Harlem. We're just opening up an office in Brownsville, Brooklyn, on Livonia and Rockaway, and we have a school on 178th and Webster Avenue in the Bronx. Graphics has been in existence. I came home in 2002. I started the program in 2003. What qualifies me to give you my advice? That's the part that the kids don't like. That's the part that means that they got to sit in the classroom. I stayed in class. I stayed in school 10 years straight with no breaks. 10 years straight. Do you want to know why I stayed in school 10 years straight? Because I have six felonies. <clears throat> I have six felonies on my record. I've been in prison 16 years in three different states. The Daily News had me listed as the fifth biggest drug dealer in Harlem at one time. And so the mission statement for my program reads like this, but let me share something with you people. You are not going to be an effective agent of change unless you have a mission statement for your personal life. If you do not have a mission statement for your personal life, you are going to be ineffective as an agent of change because you don't know why you're doing it. That's where burnout comes in. And so the mission statement for my life is very simple. In Harlem, in the 80s, in the 90s, I was one of the individuals that bought tons of cocaine and tons of heroin and all of that stuff into the community. So the crack babies that all y'all having problems with, I created them. And so my grandmother always say, if you make a mess, clean it up. So the crack babies, that's my shit. So I got to clean it up. That's why I'm back. And that's why I hired brothers like Mr. Shiraz and, and the team of other brothers that I hired, because it was our mess. We did it in the 80s and the 90s, and we left society to go to prison, and we came back home on a mission to clean up our mess. OK? Watch this. The vision of graphics. The graphics visualizes helping children by helping their fathers become more responsible, helping ex offenders by providing healthy alternatives to reoffending, helping gang members by providing a safe out that will lead to a more productive life, and helping the community by changing the way that our participants think, process information, and approach situations. We visualize success through tireless self work and through transparent partnerships with those that support our view. We Look to change the community by changing the way that our participants think, the way that they process information, and the way that they approach situations. Okay. The objective here is to develop 
and produce a customized programming that will provide New York City ACS with a new and measurable approach to reducing and controlling gang activity inside its SD and SD facilities using effective non-traditional programming and wraparound services. We have a wraparound service component that's going to be so, that's so dynamic, um, I think that you guys will really be impressed, okay? The goal here is to develop and produce a targeted network of ACS administrators and school leaders that will partner with graphics to offer a new innovative and measurable approach to decrease the incidence at SD and non-SD facilities by providing programs <coughs> that decrease the number of youth sentenced to SD and NSD facilities. Why are we here? How about that picture right there? Ain't that a future convict? Ain't that a future convict? See, earlier today I heard some folks talk about black folks and white folk and all this other stuff and the new Jim Crow and all that. And see, I'm not, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't do the roots thing. I don't do the roots thing. I don't do the slave ship and I don't do the point the thing at somebody else. I'm more of a, I'm not gonna point the thing at white folks because it's three more pointing up at me and one up at God as a witness. I'm gonna put the get on a train in the morning to go to my meeting or when I get on a train to come here to talk to you, here's what I see. On one end of the train, I see the black mother with the boy that looked like this and she over there and yeah, and you see, and love and hip hop, and you see what they, stop, and you better, and her son looking like this, you know, the two seat, the two, the two seat train, the two seat, on the, and then that same seat on the other end of the car, I see a white woman with her two year old child and she feeding them carrots What's wrong with this picture right here? Oh, it's gonna get hot in here with the Q and A. It's gonna get real hot. With the Q &A. How does graphics work with youth gangs? To divert youth away from street gangs, graphics uses two approaches: education and entrepreneurialism. Where do we do our work? Inside of NYC DOE, public middle, public middle and high school. As a vendor to New York City Department of Education, our targets are those middle schools and high schools that either have histories and or incidents of mid to high level violence, are failing in their letter grade, are on the list of close, and or those schools that have transferred a YAB system. How does it work? In line with the chances regulations and common core standards, our graphics life skill curriculum is blended with the teacher's lesson plan to produce a new daily lesson goal that speaks directly to each child's experience delivered by a credible witness. Let me explain this without reading. How many of you guys about to show a hand? How many of you guys ever seen the magazine feds? Don Diva? Uh, Brian, what, what's some of the mother? <laughs> All that stuff that sensationalizes what go on in the neighborhood. Talking about the drug dealers from back in the day. All that, all that, all, all, all the ignorance on the five dollar table. You know how to be a pimp one on one and Terry Woods and all that other foolishness. That's why it costs five dollars. Okay. What we've done at Graphics is this. We've taken the story of myself and all of those individuals that are glorified and sensationalized in those magazines. And as opposed to putting it in the magazine so a, the, the fragile mind of a child can read it and then aspire to be like that, we take that story and we turn it into something that we put into a curriculum and we take it into a classroom with worksheets and we've aligned all of the lifestyles of the drug dealers and the stick up kids and the murderers. We've put it, turned it into a curriculum and we take it into a classroom and we deliver it to the kids that aspire to be shooters and they get two credits for it. So here's why you don't need to be like Baby Sam and Nicole's and Uzi Delroy and Killer Ben and all those. Here's why you don't need to be like that. Here's why you don't need to be like who Dr. Kai was years ago. And you're going to receive two credits towards your graduation for that. So what we do when we go in schools is this. And when we come in facilities is this. We allow the administration to identify the top 25, the 25 of the worst children in the school or the facility. And I have one rule. You get the 25 kids, give us a room, and get the hell out of the way. 
That's my rule. And what we do is we work with those children, we modify their behaviors, and we slowly transition them back into a healthy classroom environment. The number one reason why kids misbehave in the classrooms that they are in is because, and I hear people say, they're scared and all of this and all. Where do you get this stuff from? Where do you get this stuff from? Honestly, college. And, 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 and that's a very good answer. And part of the reason why I did this program was because I've never seen, a, I've never seen the university of entrepreneurialism. Colleges empower us to be subordinate employees. Colleges empower us to go right into the system and keep pushing it forward because when you get in there, there's so much stuff going on, you feel defeated after the three years because you feel like your work, your, your, your work is pointless. That's the reason why I did this. I didn't want to feel like my work was pointless. Okay. We take those kids and we modify their behaviors and we transition them back into a healthy classroom where they can keep up. These are the outcomes. Now watch this, watch this, people. In the 12 years, the graphics has been around. Right, what's under, under $400? Under. In the 12 years that graphics has been around, we have taken in under $400 in donations. Under $400 in 12 years. That's the number after 399 and before 401. <laughs> Under four hundred dollars, seven schools, seventy percent increase in LTA attendance. How many of y'all know what LTA means? Long-term absence. Those are the kids that already said, "I ain't jacking school, man. I ain't with that." And mom's in the room because they smoked the blunt last night. She can't get up, and he's like, "Yo, I ain't jacking school, man. That's it. I'm done." That's LTA. Seventy percent increase in LTA attendance. Twenty percent increase in grades. We've got seventy-five student jobs. We've done thirty field trips. We've done five community service projects. Two hundred and fifty-nine kids promoted to the following grades. Fifteen enrolled into college. We served four hundred students. Sixty percent decrease in incidents in each school. One hundred paid internships. Three college tours. Twenty-five kids out of street games. Fifty guns off the street. One hundred high school graduates and one fatality. In all of that time. And one former student, now adult, has been gainfully employed for eight years on the same job that he received from graphics workforce training. That's what we've done, independent of any of Bloomberg money and everybody else money. And so I need y'all to do me a favor, ask de Blasio, where the hell all y'all tax dollars are doing? That's what I need y'all to do. Why are we here? The purpose of this training is to strategize and identify new and effective ways to address problematic behavior in SD and non-SD facilities that may be attributed to gang activity. Let's keep that in mind. What we know, at graphics, we know why street gangs and crews are attracted to kids. We know why kids join street gangs. We know why kids do not talk to adults, and we know why kids do not participate in programming when you get them. We know why. You know how we know why? Because my very first experience with juvenile detention, I think I may have been, because I was always tall, I think I may have been 14 years old, and my family's originally from Charleston. We moved to Buford, South Carolina, and I was always like, you know, the New York kid. And so I think I may have been 14 at like 5'9", five, 5'10", five, and the detention teacher, I was in the bathroom, and he just felt he had the irresistible compulsion to put his hands on me, and I beat him up and put his head in the toilet. And so I went to reformatory school in Columbia, South Carolina for two years. And so I was the kid. I, I was that kid. I was that kid being mistreated in non-security non detention or security detention. I was that kid in the juvenile detention center like Spofford and Crossroads. And when I got there, the person that gets the check that was charged with the responsibility of providing services was being crazy, right? Here. No, what you doing? Why you? That's the person that they was paying to help me. That's who they was paying to help me. Okay? So, stop blaming white folks. Stop blaming white folks. If it was the 60s and Martin Luther King was here, I would understand. But Farrakhan, and I don't support, you know, any, any I, I, just, I just like truth. Farrakhan says something about 15 years ago that resonates with me right now. And he said, 
if we could get the interest. We have over a thousand, we have over 10,000 million African American and Hispanic millionaires in this nation with a net worth of $10 million or more. If we can get the, if they would give us the interest off their money, we would be able to make a difference. Because guess what? Every time I go to the Jewish community, they pool their resources and they're making a difference. Every time I go to Chinatown, they pool their resources. You go to Chinatown, you can't even read none of the signs down there. They making a difference. Every time I go to Little Italy, they pooling their resources and they making a difference. Every time I go to Brownsville, what I see. Every time I go to Flatbush, what I see. Every time I go to Newark, Irvington, Trenton, what I see. South Bronx, what I see. So stop blaming white folks. They doing what they supposed to do. They're doing what they're supposed to do for theirs. When are we going to do what we need to do for ours? Facts. That was a great question. Okay? So I need some of those questions later on. How can we help you? We know how to make street gang life unattractive. Because see, that's attractive. That's attractive right there to that kid right there. You know why that's attractive? Because when he got that gun pointed at you, he looking at the principal. Your face, a brother of mine did a play. I don't want to, that's, that's one of the brothers that I hired, one of my brothers um, that came home from prison and I hired him. He wrote, a, he wrote, he used his life, he wrote a book, and it's actually the, the, the producer of uh, Make You Want to Holler, oh, accepted God. his story, and his life story is on Broadway right now. So I'm not going to, you know, spill the bean. But that kid that's looking, that's on the other end of that gun, when you got that gun in your face, he see, this is what he see. Your daddy ain't shit. You look just like him. Can't stand him. And that's what he see. Go in there. Go in there. Clean up that damn room. That's what he see. You know, ever since you've been in this school, you've done nothing. You, 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 you're just a failure. You, just, you don't go to class. You don't. That's what he see. That's what he see. That's his get back right there. And it doesn't matter that you never did anything to him. That's his get back right there. Okay? We know how to fix that. What we use, we use an education curriculum that has been proven effective. We use proven embedded credible messages. We have evidence-based research. And we have 24-hour wraparound community services. Now, I want you guys to question 24-hour community services. There's exciting stuff going on that you need to know. And what do I need from you guys? To communicate to your program managers and your program directors who we are. Ideally, we're looking for a long-term, fully funded, and totally transparent partnership with a contractor that will afford graphic the opportunity to operate its evidence-based practices, maintain its staff, maintain its identity, in conjunction with full growth mentoring. That's it. So, people, I tell you it's going to be quick because the question and answer is going to be long. What these kids need are answers. Stop trying to be these kids' friend. Don't come to work and be a professional and then you your daughter's best friend when you go home. Don't come to work to try to exert authority and, and, do, and then when they come to your child, you know, you trying to, you know, kick it with your son and all that, like, you know, y'all on the block or whatever, because I wish you could be a fly on the wall in one of my programs or in the schools when I have to get on the telephone. I have a daughter. I don't have any biological kids. I got about 5,000 non-biological kids. <laughs> and I have any kids because I've been in prison all my life. On this device right here, I have to tell one of my daughters to give her dad a chance because he's never done anything for her and she decided she wanted to call me dad. And I said, do you know that that's a huge responsibility, little girl? Because you know what that means? That means, since I graduated from MCNY, you have to go to, first you gotta get your BA from Columbia, since it's down the street, and then your second BA has to probably come from Boston University, and then your first master's, because you can't do anything less than I did, and your first master's has to come from um, MIT, and then your second master's needs to come from Wharton, and then your PhD need to come from Oxford, because all those schools rank higher than 
where I graduated from. And do you know that this little black girl from Brownsville was so thrilled that she graduated at the top of her class? This little black girl coming out of Brownsville, Brooklyn, graduated at the top of her class. If kids see more, they want to be more. Facts. So this is what I'm going to say, and I'm going to open up the floor for questions and answers. Because see, I'm getting ready. How many of y'all seen Transformers? I mean, I mean, um, um, you know, Decepticons back in the days. I'm getting ready. To, I'm getting ready to just. I'm getting. I'm going to turn myself into about eight different people, and I'm going to sit in all these chairs right here. I'm going to sit in all these chairs. Okay. Because my challenge to you is this. If it's a hundred of y'all in this room, I dare you. I dare you to give a damn about a child that you did not push out. I dare you to give a damn about a child that you did not create, that you did not co-create. I dare you to go to your community and find a child and give a damn about that child the way you give a damn about yours. Because see, if, see, 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 that street light concept, I came up under that street light concept, okay? I came up under that. And you, know, you could be doing some scalesies and you could be shooting. And when that street light came on, you ever seen Bugs Bunny with Daffy Duck? And he, he running so fast and running so hard, he didn't even open the door, he ran through the door. You see the body print in the door. That's what we had to do when the street lights came on. I don't give a damn what you was doing, you got in that house before the street lights came on. It wasn't because we got a beaten by everybody from the community. It was because when you were in school and you misbehaved and the little Hispanic lady came to pick up her grandkids and picked you up and they told her what you did when she disciplined her kids, you got to pop upside your head and you knew the grand ass whooping was going to come when you got home to your grandmother <laughs> with the extension cord after you got out the bathtub. That was coming later, but you knew that that little pop and then you got, and then when you got to the building and your uncle was coming home from work or somebody, and she, hey, you know what he was doing in school? Tick said he was in school, standing on the desk, talking about he Tarzan and all that. What you, are you crazy? What's wrong with you? And you, all that, and somebody got on and they told what you did. You heard something about that. And then when you got home, you knew. When you got home, your grandmother, your mother already got the message, so you sit in the room doing extra homework. <laughs> Extra homework. You get the iron cord and the belt, put it under the mattress. Get the iron cord, put it in the closet behind the shoes, all that, so she can't find it. It wasn't because we got beat by everybody. It was, and, and I think the Nigerian sister said it, it was the thought of what was going to happen to you, that you misbehaved. So how is it that I'm looking at 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 people in this room, and it's eight kids in the community that's wreaking havoc in the community. Eight kids. It's not de Blasio's fault. It's not Bloomberg's fault. It's our fault. Because if I, one individual, and the gentleman and the, and the fellas that I hired, if I can make a difference and I can bring on individuals and continue to make a difference in the lives of these kids. And I have a team of ex-offenders around me that give a damn. And we have nothing. We have nothing. How can you not make a difference? How can you not make a difference? Because right now, right now, see, I'm not talking about the riot and throwing the, throwing the rocks and the breaking stuff up and all that. If it's 100 people in this room right now and you wanted something to happen, what's the ACS commissioner name? Hot damn, why y'all work there? <laughs> How you don't know the name of the person on your chat? Gladys. Gladys, Gladys carry on. Right now, right now, this is what we got. Let me show you what you let slip by. Let me show you what we got right now. We have right now what everybody in here prayed to God for. We have an African-American president that's a father and, and, and a first lady that give a damn. We got a governor that give a damn. We got a mayor that give a damn. We got an ACS commissioner that's a grandmother that give a damn. Why we don't give a damn? Why we don't care? I wish I could be Obama's advocate for one day. You know, like, 
the last day of the presidency when they go to the Air Force One and they leave. I want to be, I want to be sitting right by him, you know, on that last day. And, and then his final word, I want to say his final word and we ride off. Because you know what I'm going to say? Black people, Hispanic people, this is what he couldn't say. Watch this. Because we ain't got nothing to lose. We are, we out. We out. We out. What we got to lose? What we got to lose? What we got to lose? I'm going to be like, look, y'all say he ain't do nothing for black people. Because one of the comedians was like, I thought when we got a black president, shit, I was going to have a white slave by now. <laughs> so, so, I, I'm going to be like, okay, look. Black people, you say he ain't do nothing for us? He didn't do. But here's my question. What did you do in power? What did you as a people empower him to do for you? Dude. And we riding off, getting on Air Force One, and we gonna be on the beach, me, him, and Jigger, and whoever else that's there. <laughs> I'm serious about that, man. <clears throat> what are we empowering Miss Carrion to do for us? Because if everybody in here right now, all 100 people, if we came to the conclusion that we wanted something, that woman has never in the hit. If she got 100 emails from 100 subordinate staff members. That would be a, a, a that would be a a, 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 a technological riot. One hundred emails from one hundred staff members saying they want a specific thing. That's never happened in the history of no government. Why? Because everybody gonna leave the room. And I like this. And I don't like that. And I like this. And everybody gonna go up their separate ways. So here's my last statement. And I'm open the floor for Q and A. When I first went to business school, one of my degrees is MBA. When I first went to business school. I'm going to say something. I'm going to make a statement. And what I say is going to offend some of y'all. Some of y'all going to like it. Some of y'all going to understand it. It's going to go over everybody's head. But I guarantee you, the people that don't like it, they're going to get mad. They're going to get up. They're going to walk out. They're going to go to the provost's office. They're going to ask them to fire me. They ain't going to fire me because I've been teaching here 15 years. And this is, this is what I say every first day of school. So good luck. And he, and he said, On a list of 10 things, 10 things, black people and Hispanic people will agree, I'm lying, 100. A list of 100 things, black and Hispanic people will agree about 99 things, find one thing to disagree about, and that union is like this. White people and Jewish people will disagree about 99 things, find one thing to agree about, and they like this. Now, I dare somebody to tell me it's different. So what's wrong with that picture, man? The person that needs to make a difference is the person that you see in the mirror. That's the person that needs to make a difference. That extra $100 that you're going to pay for them shoes, all you... African American, all you black men in here that have this irresistible compulsion to be in front of some goddamn video games with kids outside getting killed. And don't even let me get into that. That's how they're being desensitized with all these guns and all that. 